Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to have a look at integrating UMA with uh, various assets from the Asset Store. Now this session is uh, it's more generic so we're going to have a look at um, some of the key things you need to look out for and after this you should be able to integrate UMA into almost anything. What I am going to do is branch off and do another playlist of videos which will basically walk you through some examples of some of the most popular assets that are on the asset store. So without any more waffle from me, let's crack on. Um, what I've got here, just like we've been doing in the last few episodes, I have an Uma. Um, as we should always have, I've got some default recipes on there for his wardrobe. I've also got these two utility recipes, so the forearm twist and the expression recipe. Again, wonderful thing, so we'll keep them. Um, and I've got this race animation controller set to the air pose. I've just got this so we can keep him still and have a look around his character. Okay. So the big problem when trying to connect an Uma with any other asset is that there tend to be two things missing. The first uh, we looked at right back at the very beginning of this series, and that is the animation controller. Um, so we can have an UMA without that existing uh, when we run at runtime it will be created but a lot of assets require this to be here uh, before we're in runtime so let's just stop easy way to fix this you already know we hit add components let's stick um, an animator on there bang that will work um, when we press play all of these variables get assigned so it all works quite nicely Brilliant. So that's our first problem solved. The next thing that any asset may look for on an Uma is the bone structure. And as we've seen here, we don't have a bone structure until we hit run. And then it appears. Again, lots of assets, uh, including Unity's own ragdoll system, require that bone structure to be in place at edit time. Um, once upon a time this was a nightmare, but again, these clever guys at UMA have fixed this. So if we head up to our UMA menu um, and look down for our bone builder, if we hit this, it brings up a very small editor window which we can assign our character in. As soon as we hit generate bones, it creates a bone structure under our UMA. And again, the clever thing is, now that's there, when we hit run, our dynamic character avatar will look for that bone structure and connect to it, rather than trying to create its own. So this really is almost everything every other asset needs. Um, before we go ahead and have a look at some examples in another video, I just want to show you a couple of gotchas. First of all, this bone structure is based on the base Uma character. Now what I mean by that, this is the model that the Uma was created from. So it's the FBX file if you like. And characters in that FBX file are actually two meters tall. Now if you happen to measure uh, our guy here, he's actually more like 1.6 meters tall. Um, your previews and your Umas are set up so that when their DNA is at 0.5 they will be of average human height for both male and female. This is why female characters always appear a little bit smaller. So this was from data that was taken. Um, that can be adjusted, we'll have a look at that in more advanced uh, lessons, but the upshot is the bone structure does not line up with our preview model here. Okay, and I can prove that to you. Um, if we hit add component, there's something really nice here. If we say Uma bone there we are, we've got Uma Bone Visualizer. If we hit that, this little component will show the bones in any uh, rigged character. So you can see straight away that this is much taller than our preview. Don't panic about this, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if we hit Run, what you should see, if we go back to our scene view, you can see that those bones are all nicely lined up inside our character. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't use this preview model to actually line up any components with your character. This is just to show you that there is an Uma there. It's not to actually represent what the Uma looks like, okay? 
Now this isn't such a big deal because a lot of the uh, systems you will want to integrate with want you to position objects such as weaponry or whatever at runtime and as you've seen at runtime everything lines up so it will work just fine okay one last gotcha I want to show you is that if we start adding bones to our Uma that's absolutely fine we can do that um, again a lot of times we want um, a grip position or a, a weapon mount point um, let's do that so let's go up the spine so where are we hips lower back up the spine and down each arm so we'll create um, an empty game object so let's have a look on the left hand here uh, let's create um, an empty game object and we'll call this um, item so again typically you fiddle these things around and look floating in midair because the bones are not in the same place as a preview again don't panic about that let's have a look down the right shoulder and do the same create an attachment point so we will create uh, again an empty game object and we'll call this item okay at the moment I'm not really doing anything here I'm just showing you this is what a lot of the systems we're going to talk about will do they will create things like this on your bone structure okay everything's hunky dory hasn't made any difference if I run and we will run through those bones and it will assimilate them into its structure but straight away we get a problem you will get this error add bones recursive item already exists and this error always occurs when you have two bones with exactly the same name okay so in our integration videos we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen and the easiest way to do it is if we go in here and we're going to say this is item R and this is item L just give them an individual name when I run now our bone structure works just fine okay and one other thing that I feel a need to squeeze into this video um, which I really didn't want to show you because it involves modifying Uma itself but occasionally you have to do is if you absolutely do need this preview model to match up with your bones which um, some assets do require set up at edit time so this does become handy we can quite easily adjust this so we're going to dip into some of the UMA code and just change one line to make this match up correctly with the bone structure so if I head to my character and double click on the dynamic character avatar script on line 444 you'll see where that scaling comes from um, so it takes a 2 meter model scales it by 0.88 in all axes um, we're just going to change those values to 1 there we go and we'll just save that and what we should see when we go back to the scene is that our preview model should now match up with the rest of the bones uh, again avoid doing that unless you absolutely have to but uh, one or two assets do require you to be able to visualize your UMA while you're messing around with it okay so a very brief video there just to sort of show you some of the gotchas that you can have when you're trying to integrate UMA into other systems um, what I do now if you're interested head on over to the integrations playlist have a look and see if there's anything in there I'll be adding to this regularly see if there's anything in there that uh, matches something you want to use and hopefully uh, that will give you a head start thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time and once again I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible uh, if you would like to support me feel free to click that link at the end of the video thank you very much and I'll see you next time